Hi guys, Unit 4 Test Review. Unit 4 Test Review. First thing we're going to look at is systems of equations. Again, what we're looking at for is we're looking for a point of intersection. That is your solution, right? So it says, what is the solution? We're looking for a point of intersection. First thing I want to look at is I want to look at my slope. If they have different slopes, we know that they will intersect at a given point. And in this case, we have a slope of negative 1 and a slope of positive 1. So we know we're going to have a point of intersection. I look at my y-intercept. My y-intercept crosses at plus 1. So up here at plus 1. So that is possible. Okay, up here at plus 1. So C is possible. B does not have a y-intercept of plus 1. So that is incorrect. And D has parallel lines. It's the same slope. Therefore, D is also incorrect. The second equation has a y-intercept of negative 3, so that is also still in play. C is not. Therefore, A is the only available answer. Looking at number 2, same thing. I want to look at my slope. If I look at number 2, I have the same slope. They both have a negative 1 for a slope. So you know it's a special case where it's either parallel lines and they will never intersect, or it is the same line and they intersect infinite many times. So if they have the same slope, I then want to look at my y-intercept. These have different y-intercepts. So we know that they have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. Therefore, they are parallel lines, and they will never intersect. If they have the same y-intercept, they are absolutely the same line, and they will intersect infinite many times. Looking at number three, hint, hint. So number three, I want to put this into y equals mx plus b form. I want to solve for y and put it in slope-intercept form. So I need to move this plus two, which is to subtract two on both sides. And I get y equals negative five x minus two. Well, guess what? Like I just said, those are the exact same line. Therefore, it intersects itself infinite many times. Number four says, what is the solution to this system? I'm going to solve this by substitution. So I know that y equals four x. So anytime I see a y, I can substitute in for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top equation, but instead of writing y, I'm going to write what it's equal to. So I'm going to put 4x equals 5x plus 7. And now I'm going to solve for x. So I need to get my x's on the same side. So we're going to move the 5x to that side. The way I do that is inverse operation. So subtract 5x on both sides. And I get negative x equals positive 7. Therefore, positive x equals negative 7. So now we just found the x value of our point of intersection. We need to plug this in and find the y value. So I'm going to plug in negative 7 in place of x. So I've got y equals 4 times negative 7. And I get negative 28. I can do the same thing for number 5. Number 5, I'm going to substitute in this expression in for y. So same thing. I'm going to rewrite my top equation. But instead of writing y, I'm going to write this expression. So I've got 3 times negative x plus 9 equals negative 1 half x plus 2. And now I'm solving for x. So I'm going to distribute my 3. Negative 3x plus 27 equals negative 1 half x plus 2. And now I'm solving for x. I want to get my x's on the same side. So let's add 1 half x to both sides. Negative 2.5x plus 27 equals 2. Now I need to move my numbers away from the x. So subtract 27. Negative 2.5x equals negative 25. Last step is always to divide by the coefficient. So I'm dividing by negative 2.5. And I get x equals positive 10. So I know that the x value of my point of intersection is 10. I'm going to take that. I'm going to plug that puppy back in. So I've got y equals negative x. So negative 10 plus 9. That gives me a negative 1. So the solution is negative 10, negative 1. Number 6, a corner store sells two kinds of baked goods, cakes and pies. So obviously, you know I had to have desserts in my questions. right? So there's my two variables. First step, to find your variables. Well, x equals one of Coach Sapp's loves, cakes. y equals the other of Coach Sapp's loves, pies. All right, so now I'm looking at my two equations. My first equation, it says I sold 13 baked goods. OK, well, what kind of baked goods am I selling? I'm selling x number of cakes, x, plus y number of pies. And I sold 13 total. So I could sell 3 and 10. I could sell 2 and 11. I could sell 5 and 8. I don't know. That's why I'm setting this up. 
Okay, now I know that I made $163. So I'm gonna get $15 for each cake that I sold, so 15 times X, plus I'm gonna get $11 for each pie that I sold, so 11 times Y, and that equals a total of 163 bucks. So now you have it set up, I can solve that any way I would like. I solved it in Desmos, and I got X is equal to five, so five cakes. And all I care about is how many cakes they sold. So all I care about is the X value. Looking at number seven, again it says, how many solutions does this system have? So I wanna know, Looking at my slope, do I have the same slope? If I do, then it's parallel or infinite many solutions. Or if I have a different slope, then it is one solution. There is no way to have two solutions. Okay, so if I was to get this to be looking the same, what I can do is I can add this six Y to both sides. I'm solving for X because I want these to look the exact same, right? So I'm adding six Y, I'm gonna move the six Y. So this becomes negative two X equals positive 6y minus 12. Again, I'm solving for x because I want it to look just like this equation up here. So I'm dividing by a negative 2. And I get x equals negative 1 third y, sorry, negative 3, excuse me, negative 3y minus 6. <gasps> look at that, x equals negative 3y, sorry, plus 6, x equals negative 3y plus six, so that's the exact same thing, therefore C, infinite many solutions. We'll do the same thing with number eight. This one's solved for Y, so let's solve this one for Y. So let's subtract five X on both sides. I get negative Y equals negative five X plus six. So I want to Y have Y by itself, so I need to get rid of this negative one, which again, let's just change every sign that we see. So Y equals positive five X minus six. So I know that's the same slope, but it's a different Y intercept. Therefore, there will be no solutions because they will never intersect. Number nine, the word problem. So again, we need to define our variables. Our two kinds of wraps are vegetarian and chicken. So let's say X equals veggie and Y equals chicken. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at, we're selling 87 wraps. So X plus Y equals 87. How much money did I make? I made 136. Well, I sold each vegetarian wrap for one dollar and I sold each chicken wrap for 170. So there's your system of equations. Okay, now if you solve, again, we're looking for X and it says 17 veggie wraps. Number 10, 11, and 12, I plugged into decimals. Okay, here are your answers, five, one. All we're doing is looking for the point of intersection, negative five, five, and negative four, one. Number 13, we're looking for a break even point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the equation equal to something, right? So it says I must invest 32.55, right? So 32.55 is my break even point. So I want my profit minus my spending, my cost to equal 32.55. Well, each program sells for 13.50, so that's my profit. So 13.50, oh, sorry, 13.75 times the number of discs that I'm selling, programs that I'm selling, but I spend, I have to spend 290 to buy each package, right? So minus the profit minus the cost, 290X. Now you solve for X and you get that X equals 300 copies. Same thing for number 14. And know that we have to invest 12,000 bucks in equipment to print yearbooks. Each yearbook costs $5 to print, but we sell them for 15, right? So profit 15 times the number of yearbooks, but each one costs me $5 to make. Well, 15 minus five is 10. So we've got 12,000, 12, excuse me, equals 10 times X, divide by 10, and we get X equals 1,200 yearbooks. Number 15, I know that my cost, okay, I have to pay my players 1,800, and the workers, 1,500. All right, so on the cost side, I've got 1,800 plus 1,500. Now, what can we get? What kind of revenue do we get? We charge $5 for each ticket, so 5X we're gonna bring in. We're also gonna make $1,300 in concessions, so plus 1,300. But it says each fan gets a free bet, right? So it's gonna cost the team $3 per bet. So once again, we're cost minus 
three. Now, each person gets a bet, right? So three times X, because again, X is the number of tickets that I sold. Well, if I sold a ticket, that person's coming to the game, so I've got to give them a bet. All right, so this is 3,300 equals 5X minus 3X is 2X plus 1,300. So now I'm solving for X, subtract 1,300. And I got 2,000 equals 2X, so therefore X equals 1,000 tickets. Number 16, I'm going to skip that. We're going to go to number 17 for time's sake. Number 17, it says, what system of inequalities is represented by the graph? So the first thing I want to look at, I'm going to say that this is line 1. right? So line 1 has a y-intercept of negative 2. So I've got y something x minus 2. right? That's my y-intercept. I'm putting it in this form, y equals mx plus b. That's your y-intercept. Here's your slope. So the next thing we need to look for is the slope. So I've got a point right there. I've also got a point right there. Well, how did I get from point one to point two? I went up one over one. So I know that I have a slope of positive one. You don't have to write that. Next thing I want to look at is I want to look at my shading and my line. I see a solid line here. Therefore, I know there needs to be a bar underneath my inequality symbol. I have shaded below. So I need a less than symbol. So there's your first equation. Second equation is that line right there. I know it has a y-intercept of negative 6. I know I have shaded below the graph and I know it's a solid line so once again we're less than or equal to. Now let's find our slope. So from there I went down 1, 2, 3 over 1. So it's a negative 3x minus 6. Okay, Because we went down. We have a negative slope. Looking at number 18, let's say that this is going to be line number 1. So that's going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, a y-intercept of positive 8. I can see that, again, I have shaded below the graph, and it's a solid line, so it's, again, less than or equal to. And now I need to find my slope. So here's another point on the graph. Now, how do I get from here to here? I went up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 divided by 4 is, you guessed it, 1. So y is less than or equal to 1x plus 8. Let's look at line number 2. Line number 2 has a y-intercept of negative 8. Let's find our slope. Uh, another point on the graph is that puppy right there. So down 1, 2, 3 over 1. So once again, it's a negative 3 for my slope. Now this is a little bit different because I shaded above the graph, still solid line, but I shaded above the graph. So y is greater than or equal to. Looking at number 19. Number 19 says, which system of inequalities represents the graph? So let's look at line number 1. Line number 1 has a y-intercept of negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. So we can't eliminate any there. But based on my negative 1, I see a solid line. So now my negative 1 should have a line underneath the inequality symbol. So C is incorrect. Same thing with A. A is incorrect because neither one of those are equal to. To make it a solid line, you need a line. Looking at my second line, it has a y-intercept of positive 2, and it's dashed. So my second line cannot have a line underneath it. It has to be less than or greater than, so we can't eliminate any there. Now, let's look at where we're shading at. So going back to line number 1, I have shaded below the graph. That means it has to be a less than symbol. So line number 1, a y-intercept of negative 1, has to be less than. Okay, Line number 1 has to be less than. Ah, D is incorrect. So B is the only possible option. I'm sorry. Coach Sapp, what are you doing? Ah, D is correct. Y is less than. B is incorrect. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Always go with your gut, guys. Always go with your gut. Y is greater than. It would be shaded above. Therefore, D is incorrect. B is the correct answer.